if you ever think ICP is in a bad spot because of the lack of VC support, allow me to blow your mind. For a long time, I myself questioned Dominic's and Definity's long-term strategy, but after seeing the clip I am about to show you, it really hit me hard. To put everything into context, in my last video I went over an article written by ICP Squad, in which they interviewed Jean Boxler, in which he said the following thing about Dominic Williams. He had to fight VCs and people who wanted to control him to stick to his vision with full integrity, he paid the full price and we all know the story. But he is still here with an incredible advance. Nobody can imagine the attacks this man has endured. For the past four years the ICP community has criticized Definity for not maintaining closer relations with VCs such as A16Z and I was one of them. Now keep that quote from Jan Boxler in mind as you watch the following clip. Big tech is building a dystopia. Tech companies would pretend like they were trying to do a good thing for the world. Now they're just openly investing in hyper gamblification products, introducing ladies and gentlemen covered, which was invested in by A16Z's speed run, starting by letting people bet against their bills. You can now gamble on your credit card balance. If you're lucky enough and you win, you may get out of debt. If not, they're gonna drive you further into it. Pick a transaction in game for a chance to win it back. It's a fun way to make money management feel more like a game and less like a chore. I cannot even start to explain how gross and disgusting this is. This literally blows my mind, but at the same time, it doesn't surprise me. If the largest venture capital firm in tech has stooped so low that they are investing in such an abomination, this is the best confirmation that this is the only type of investment they are looking for. They don't care about innovation, they don't care about solving any real problems, all they care about is pure profit and it doesn't matter where that profit comes from. Remember how bummed everyone was every time Andreessen Horowitz released a crypto report and the internet computer was not mentioned even once? Well, don't be, because at this point it's clear as day to me that all the investments they choose to talk about are in the same league as covered. This is the best confirmation you could possibly have for what Bobby said in the clips I covered in my last video. The only part that's even remotely concerning to me is the industry itself. Perception management really is the game with all of these different VCs, with everything. Nobody in this industry has any real conviction in the future of this tech. This is the criteria that should be used. What problems does your technology solve? But the industry doesn't want to do that because the industry knows that the rest of this industry isn't solving any problems. They're just grifting and scamming. Here's what I think happened between Definity and the VCs that backed them up before the launch. VCs saw such a big opportunity with ICP before the 2021 launch that their eyes turned into dollar signs. They probably thought they were going to play on easy mode by having a blockchain that innovates the space, marketing it, and at the same time turning it into a casino just like Solana. Things would have been so much easier, but Dominic most likely knew that if ICP goes on this path, ultimately it wouldn't help the internet computer vision, so he decided to fight for autonomy and just stick to the initial vision. The price he had to pay was precisely what Jian said in that interview. He had to fight VCs and people who wanted to control him to stick to his vision with full integrity. He paid the full price and we all know the story, but he is still here with an incredible advance. Nobody can imagine the attacks this man has endured. Just think about who attacked ICP and Dominic in the beginning. It was Solana, Avalanche, just to name a few, but these are the exact products projects that always make the Andres and Horowitz crypto report list. Maybe I'm going off the rails here, but at this point this is the only timeline that makes sense in my mind. This is the only reason the internet computer has been isolated for such a long time. Perhaps for some of you this will not sound like news, but seeing that such a massive venture capital firm decided to invest in a casino that literally allows people to bet against their debt was too much for me, and it helped me put things better into perspective. My conviction in ICP and Dominic's vision is now stronger than ever. So even if the price will need to go lower, I'll be here, pushing ICP content like never before. Please let me know in the comments what you think about this story. Now let's move on to other news. After a challenging week characterized by a relentless, bearish drift and a surge for a definitive price floor, yesterday delivered a surprising reversal. Tuesday's close saw ICP surge to $3.75, a significant jump from its open of $3.39. This strong performance allowed 
ICP to reclaim the crucial $2 billion cap, a notable recovery from its recent lows below this psychological barrier. The positive price action was accompanied by a welcome rebound in market engagement. We observed a healthy bounce in social dominance to 0.69%, with mentions climbing back to 4.5k. Trading volume, while increasing to $112.7 million, still remains significantly below the 30-day moving average. This indicates that while there was a strong buying impulse, it wasn't backed by the kind of sustained, massive volume that typically signifies a robust trend reversal. However, the most critical data point and one that injects significant tension into yesterday's positive price story comes from the network supply dynamics. We've been tracking supply changes closely from the initial large influx through a fleeting deflationary period and then back to sustained increases. Yesterday, we witnessed an unprecedented increase of 1.3 million ICP in circulating supply. This is a colossal figure dwarfing any previous single-day increases we've reported. While net staking remained positive at 45.9k ICP, demonstrating continued commitment from some holders, this massive supply expansion introduces a significant counter-narrative to the bullish price action, raising questions about its source and potential long-term impact. The amount of ICP burned for network activity dipped slightly to $4,100, a minor detail overshadowed by the magnitude of the supply increase. My conclusion is that Tuesday's action presented ICP with a powerful upside surprise in price and a slight but much needed bounce in social engagement, successfully reclaiming the $2 billion market cap. Yet, this rally is overshadowed by a massive influx of new circulating supply, a factor that cannot be ignored. The market is now faced with a fundamental question. Can sustained demand absorb this significant supply expansion or is this a dead cat bounce on the back of looming dilution? We're watching closely to see how how these conflicting signals resolve. Rushi positioned the internet computer's current stage with that of transformative technologies in their nascent phases. Ethereum is where the internet was in 1996, Solana is where mobile was in 2008. The internet computer is where cloud was in 2012, scalable, efficient and ready to power the next generation of apps. Rushi added that people still underestimate all three, suggesting ICP's profound potential, much like its predecessors, remains largely unacknowledged by many. ICP also demonstrates robust activity where it matters most, and that is development. Phoenix Group recently shared data revealing the internet computer's leading position among active crypto projects. For three months, ICP led the charts with an impressive 1,207 GitHub commits, significantly outpacing Chainlink with 904 and Mina Protocol with 874. This consistent development activity shows a committed and growing builder community dedicated to enhancing the protocol. A significant the outcome of this development drive is the push towards seamless multi-chain interoperability, as detailed by Grimm in a recent tweet. With native Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana and Dogecoin already in beta on ICP, users can interact with these assets on-chain without the risks associated with wrapped tokens or bridge-based swaps. Grimm emphasizes that these integrations are just the start, setting the stage for broader access to countless other utility projects. The ICP Hub's Egypt team is taking this vision a step further. Manise is building freemium multi-chain access with instant connectivity to every chain, optimizing liquidity flow through features like sovereign wallets, a multi-chain launchpad, and crucially, atomic swaps. By leveraging ICP's liquidity pools and automated backend agents, this innovative approach aims to make fragmented liquidity across isolated chains obsolete, offering users and developers a smooth and natural way to connect major chains. This functionality, utilizing chain fusion to its full potential could drastically enhance user experience and attract a massive influx of investors by making the internet computer a central hub for decentralized finance. Despite its technical strengths and development momentum, ICP has faced its share of FUD, particularly regarding its tokenomics. A user addressing concerns about terrible tokenomics, massive inflation, coins printed from thin air, provided factual supply data in a tweet. Between December 11th, 2024 and December 8th, 2025, the the total ICP supply increased from 526 to 541.6 million. This translates to an inflation rate of less than 3% over the year, demonstrating that the only thing created from thin air is the FUD. In terms of market activity, the internet computer ecosystem is showing positive signs. Fabio reported that ICP recently experienced its highest transfer volume in the last year and a half, indicating increased on-chain movement of tokens between wallets. This metric, combined with a technical analysis by, I don't know, 
man, suggests a potential shift. I don't know man, studying Wyckoff accumulation and distribution remarked that it keeps getting clear to me that ICP has been in a massive accumulation range for the past three years and just displayed a clear spring test with volume and retraced with reducing volume. While not financial advice, such observations point to a potentially maturing market structure for the asset. Ultimately, the journey to mass adoption for ICP like any disruptive technology is complex. Jason, reflecting on community engagement, offered a thoughtful perspective. Screaming at other crypto bros to recognize ICP is a lesson in absolute futility. He argued that adoption isn't forced but happens when the circumstances in the world demand a solution that the crypto cloud offers. Jason cautions against frustration over current price actions, suggesting that getting mad at the world for not choosing ICP now is a strong counter creation to mass adoption and positive price action because of the underlying insecure emotions that are projected. This perspective emphasizes the importance of continued development and ecosystem building, allowing the internet computer's inherent utility to shine when the market is ready. 